This is going to be about doomsday prepping or preparing for the end times. I went online and looked up a list by doomsday preppers about the things you're going to need to survive if a tragedy comes or the end of the world comes. And many people believe they're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble or what people call the tribulation. And some of them are prepping to go through the horrible time period described in the book of Revelation. Some believe they're going halfway through and some believe they're going all the way through the entire seven years. And there are others who don't believe the Bible but sense that a doomsday event is approaching. They are also prepping for these horrible events. And here is a list of some things one would need to survive the time of Jacob's trouble. This is for those of you who are rejecting the gospel. And maybe you will want to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ after you see this so-called survival list from these doomsday preppers. But the first one is you will need lots of water. Number one on their list was a lot of water. And bottled water and water filters. But God isn't too friendly with the water supply during this future time. Many people will wake up to turn on the sink and have blood shooting out of the spigot. And the book of Revelation tells us what God does to the water. Revelation 18 says, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. Revelation 8.11, And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Revelation 11.6, These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. So Moses and Elijah can turn the water to blood. It doesn't look like God is too friendly to the water in this future time. Remember how much the prices of bottled water went up after Hurricane Harvey? And with all the tragedies going on in the time of Jacob's trouble, water is going to be on high demand. Also, it is going to be really hot during a certain time in the tribulation. Revelation 16, 8 says, And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. So throughout the events of this time, you are going to need lots and lots of water. Or you could just really be a doomsday prepper and that you prepare yourself so that you don't have to face the coming time of Jacob's trouble. John 7:38 says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. John 4:10 says, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Jesus is the living water. If you receive him now, then you will never thirst. Believe on him in his death, burial, and resurrection as payment for your sins, and then you'll be raptured out before this time even comes. Uh, number two on the doomsday prepper list, you are going to need a lot of food. When Jesus describes the time of Jacob's trouble in Matthew 24, he gives some warnings. Matthew 24, 7 says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. So there's going to be famines in the tribulation time period. Can you store enough food to last your family through this entire time? Or for a very long length of that time? Many people say that you don't know a person truly until he is to the point of starving. Many people will do anything to survive and a killer instinct will kick in. Many people would kill their own family for food just to survive. Do you have what it takes to make it through this time period? You could stock up a lot of food and risk a shortage or you could prepare right now so that you don't have to go through that horrible time period. John chapter 6 and verse 35 says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. John 6, 48 says, I am that bread of life. There is a hunger inside every person that can only be filled by the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. 
And when God rained down manna from the children for the children of Israel, it was foreshadowing the Lord Jesus Christ. And once you get in the Lord Jesus Christ, nothing can separate you from his love. Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine? Not even a famine can separate you from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. But number three on the list, they had weapons and guns. And all of these doomsday preppers are telling you to buy all of these guns and weapons for when the Illuminati or whoever comes to take over. Having guns is good, but are you going to take it against an army and be able to kill an entire army? Look at this army of horsemen described in the book of Revelation. Revelation 9.16 And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, and having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, and smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power was in their mouth, and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. You are definitely going to need a lot of guns. You could sit around with all your guns and wait on them to come, or you could prepare now. 2 Corinthians 10.4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. The best weapon is a sharp two-edged sword. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sun, sunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The best way for you to be prepared is to get a King James Bible, open the book, and find out how to believe the gospel. Find out what the gospel is. Find out what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross to pay for your sins. And maybe you will make it to the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, but then what? You still have the scariest part yet to come, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints on white horses. Look at Revelation 19, 11 through 15. It says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a new name written. A name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Do you really believe you could kill Jesus Christ and all of his saints with your guns and weapons? The book of Joel describes how the saints can fall on swords and it won't hurt them. How can you kill something that won't even feel any pain and that are like supermen? If you stabbed one of those guys, it would just bend the blade. You better go get a real weapon. You better go get the word of God and believe the gospel that's written inside. But number four on the list, you are going to need financial security. This list I'm giving you is something I read on a Doomsday Prepper website. They go into about making sure your bill, bills are paid off, making sure you have precious metals, and making sure you're storing cash outside of the banks. I'm not saying these aren't good things, but money won't help you in the future great tribulation if you don't take the mark of the beast then you can't do anything you can't go to college get a job buy food or do anything revelation thirteen seventeen says and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name you say well then i'll just take the mark i guess you could but what happens when the sores come on your body because of taking the mark Revelation 16.2 says, And the first wind and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. These guys gnaw their tongues in pain, 
and blasphemed God because of the sores they received for taking the mark. By telling you these things, I'm trying to save you with fear. And there is nothing wrong with scaring someone and talking sense into them. If you take the mark, you're going to break out in sores so bad that the sores will stain your clothes. That's why Jude 23 says this, And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Your garments get spotted by your flesh because of these sores. I'm trying to pull you out of the fire because everyone who takes the mark will wind up in the lake of fire. Revelation 14, 9 and 10 says, And a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Maybe you have a lot of money and you're not worried about the future. But Proverbs 23, 5 says, Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. When it comes down to it, your money can't help you. Having financial security can't help you. Only eternal security can help you. You can only get eternal security by believing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you get saved today, you won't have to worry about going through the tribulation. You won't have to worry about going to hell. You won't have to ever worry about losing your salvation. The salvation will be eternal, and the rewards and precious metals you receive at the judgment seat will also be eternal. For you to get this salvation, you will have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died. He died for you, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood to pay your sin debt. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption, through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. But next, you are going to need shelter. According to the doomsday preppers, you're going to need a very good shelter to stay in. But you're going to have to have some kind of super hardcore underground bunker. Your house definitely isn't going to make it, and even an underground bunker won't, won't make it. These rich guys are already making luxurious underground bunkers to hide in case of a catastrophe. But look what drops from the sky in the time of Jacob's trouble. Revelation 8-7 says, And the first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood. So hell and fire mingled with blood are falling from the sky, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees were was burned up and all green grass was burned up revelation 16 21 says and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven every stone about the weight of a talent and men blasphemed god because of the plague of the hell for the plague thereof was exceeding great and i doubt an underground bunker could withstand these events and even if it did, what about the earthquake in Revelation 16, 17, and 18? It says, And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. The fact that men are making these underground bunkers is doing nothing but fulfilling Bible prophecy. The book of Revelation says they will hide themselves in the dens and rocks on the mountains. You could risk it and build yourself a super bunker, but why not find true shelter in the Lord Jesus Christ? Psalms 91.4 says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. You would be safer standing out in the middle of the hailstorm with Jesus Christ than you would in an underground bunker without Jesus Christ. But number six on the list, you are going to need a first aid kit. And I found this to be one of the more laughable things on the doomsday prepper list. Nothing in a first aid kit is going to help a sting that you get from one of the locusts. The locusts described in Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9 and verse 5 says unto them it was given that they should not kill them but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. So these locusts are going to torment men for five months. They're not going to kill them. They're just going to torment them. And then verse 10 says, And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. 
The Bible says these men were desired to die and death shall flee from them. A first aid kit isn't going to help the sores you got from taking the mark either. If you choose to reject the gospel and go into this future time period, then you are going to get too many wounds to heal. You might not even get a chance to take care of the things that happen to your flesh. You can get a first aid kit together and risk it, but why not shake the blinders off your eyes and believe the gospel? Satan blinds the minds of people to the gospel. If you will come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe the gospel, then you can be healed today and escape the coming tribulation. John 12, 40 says, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. You get instant healing to your soul and spirit when you are born again. Then one day you will get your body healed at the rapture when you get a glorified body. And number seven, this one is also pretty laughable. You will need flashlights. You're going to need a light source. And this was number seven on the doomsday prepper list. Many people believe there is going to be a EMP attack that will wipe out all power and technology during the tribulation. And Revelation 16.10 says, And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. Maybe this will happen and the lights go out on the Antichrist's kingdom. Maybe that EMP attack does happen. Maybe that's what that is. The second coming of Jesus Christ is described as a day of darkness. Job 15.23 says, He wandereth abroad for bread, saying, Where is it? He knoweth that the day of darkness is ready at his hand. So there are days of darkness. There's days of darkness now, and there's going to be real days of darkness in the future. Joel 2.2 2 says, A day of darkness and of gloominess. This is the second coming, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. So that second coming where Jesus Christ comes back is a day of darkness. Zephaniah 1.15, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wiseness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. If you go through the time of Jacob's trouble, you are going to need a lot of flashlights and batteries because the lights are going to go out on this sinful world. And the best way to prepare for this is to get the light of life. John 8, 12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Notice how when you get your eyes open and turn from Satan to God, you go from darkness to light. Acts 28, 18 says, To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. John 9, 5 says, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. You can't follow Satan and not expect to be literally left in the dark. If you reject Jesus Christ, then you automatically choose the devil. And the only way to escape the horrible time period yet to come is by believing the gospel. And the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The gospel is this. Jesus Christ died, he died for you, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. He died because you are a sinner in need of a Savior. He died because your sins separated you from God and you are worthy of hell because of those sins. He died because he wants you to believe on him and be able to have peace with God. He took your place on the cross. It should have been you dying. We should go to hell and burn forever for our own sins. But he became sin for us when he died for us on the cross. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Don't think for a second that you haven't sinned against God. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. You are going to die one day, and you are going to be judged by God one day. Are you prepared for this judgment? Men will waste a lot of time preparing for other things that really don't matter. Yet they don't want to prepare for something that is going to determine their eternity. 
The way to prepare for eternity is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9 through 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. When I was saved, I believed the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. I called out to God and said, I, I want to be saved. I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to go to hell. But I also know Jesus died for me. And he was buried and rose again the third day. And I'm now believing on him and what he did on the cross to save me. The prayer never saved me. We don't get saved by praying a prayer. We don't get saved by asking Jesus Christ to save us. The things we say with our mouth is just outward evidence of what take, took place inside of your heart. Before I had even spoke those words, I had already believed in my heart to salvation. You believe with the heart to salvation. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ before it is too late. And this is the only way to truly be a doomsday prepper and end up on the winning side at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ.